Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a tiny gaming PC powered by a Ryzen 7 5700G. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, this might seem very familiar, but trust me, there is a twist with this one because we're actually going to be able to get some really awesome GPU performance out of this portable mini gaming PC. And that's because the motherboard that I'm going to be using in this build actually supports Thunderbolt 3 on an AMD platform. And in turn, we're able to plug an eGPU into this thing. Now, it might not make a lot of sense to some people to build something specifically for an eGPU, but on one side of it, we've got a very small portable PC that's actually capable of some pretty decent gaming like it sits with the internal Radeon 8 graphics on that 5700G. But then, when you get to the house and you're ready to up the resolution and that frame rate, you can plug it right into your eGPU setup. And in this video, I'm going to be using a Sonnet eGPU breakaway box. They're actually pretty inexpensive, along with an RX 5700. I was going to go with something a little lower end, but I figured I'd just go ahead and see what we could get out of this whole PC. I've personally been waiting for a little while now for an AM4 platform with Thunderbolt 3, and I've had this motherboard that we're going to be using for a little while, but initially, when it was released, it didn't support eGPUs until a couple BIOS updates later, and I just really haven't gotten around to doing a build with it. And the motherboard I'm talking about is the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming ITX TB3. This is an AM4 platform. It will support these 5000 series Ryzen APUs with a BIOS update. And obviously, it supports Thunderbolt 3, so we can plug in that eGPU. Now, this board is a little odd. Even though it's an AM4 board, you have to use an Intel cooler with it. So I've got 1155 Thermal Right Copper Cooler that fits right on this and the small case that we're going to be using. So we've got the 5700G. For the RAM, we're going with some pretty fast stuff for DDR4. It's 4400 megahertz. We've got that thermal right copper cooler. Fits right in the case we're going to be using. And speaking of the case, this is the Nwin Chopin Pro. So instead of the 150 watt power supply, it's got the 200 watt power supply. And with this 5700G overclocked on all eight cores, it can pull over 150 watts, up to around 187. So I definitely needed the Pro model if I wanted to get the most out of it. And for this build here, I'm just going with a simple Silicon Power M.2 SSD. It's a 512 gigabyte version. So this is not going to be a build tutorial. I've actually done a few of them, but you can always find something else online. There's tons of them. The cooler we have here actually does a great job. The cooler we have here actually does a great job with the 5700G. Used it in one of my previous builds, but this happens to be the Intel version of the cooler. It's the AXP90X47. And it does fit right on this board. I was actually a little worried that I wouldn't be able to make it fit, but it sits right down in here nice and neat. So we're good to go on the cooler side of things. Now it's time to get this inside of the case. And like I mentioned, this is the Nwin Chopin Pro with the 200 watt power supply. This is definitely a tight fit, but I am a big fan of this case, especially for these little mini APU builds. And when we get, let's say, the 6000 series APUs, I'll probably be using this same case. So I can get this down in here, and this motherboard actually has a pre-installed I.O. plate on the back, and sometimes it gets caught right on the corner, so you will just have to be careful about that. But it does fit in here with your taller RAM, that cooler we're using here, and the motherboard. And there we go. Yeah, that little thing just always catches on the corner. But it does sit in here really nicely. And believe it or not, with the Chopin, you can actually make it look really good with some decent cable management. So once I got everything secured and the cables tied up, it looks something like this. You can kind of just push those cables up in the front of the case. And as you can see, we do have two USB 3.0 ports on the front. We've got our audio in and out on the front also. And this also supports two 2.5 inch drives around back, but for this I'm just using that single M.2 drive. I just really like the way they've set this case up, and the newer Pro models you can get in that kind of gunmetal gray, which I think looks really nice. So here we are, booting up again. I've already installed Windows 10 Pro, I've got a lot of applications installed, but I'll just give you a quick look at everything running on the iGPU. So we've got a really powerful CPU here, that 5700G has 8 cores, 16 threads, and I'm actually overclocked to 4.4 GHz on all 8 cores here. And I could go a bit higher, but it really comes down to that smaller CPU cooler. So as you can see, we've got the 5700G, and we've got the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. So the way I have it set up right now is about as powerful as I can make this little tiny machine without worrying about cooling. We're at 4.4 gigahertz on all eight cores. I've got the built-in Radeon 8 graphics overclocked to 2300 megahertz. And really what makes a big difference is that faster RAM. It's running at 4,400 megahertz. 
So the first thing we're going to do here is just run some benchmarks on it like it sits. Then we're going to test out some PC games. And once we're finished with that and get kind of a baseline of what this thing can do all by itself, we're going to plug in that eGPU. So first up, we have 3D Mark Night Raid, 20,432, Fire Strike, 4,679, and finally, Time Spy with a 1,768. Remember, we're at 4.4 on all 8 cores and 2300 MHz on the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. Moving over to some tests without the eGPU, we have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite 1080p Medium Low. Runs great at 60. I've had really good luck with the 5700G in games like this. But when you move over to something like Doom Eternal, you definitely want dynamic resolution scale on. Right now, we're only at 900p low and it's struggling to hit 60. But with that dynamic resolution scale on, it will do it. Moving over to GTA 5, not bad performance here. We've got 1080p with a high normal mix. I got an average of 81 FPS out of this. Really good performance and totally playable in my opinion. Next up we have Project Cars 2 and it is a bit hit or miss depending on the track you're on with these built-in Radeon graphics. But most of the time you can do over 60 with a medium low mix. But something like Cyberpunk 2077 really struggles. 720p low with population density set to the lowest. We only got an average of 48 FPS. So it's not bad by itself and you know carrying this around to your buddy's house you can definitely get down a game on it. It does really great with emulation and if you're interested in checking a video like that out I'll leave a link in the description. It's basically the same build that we have here minus the eGPU. So with this Sonnet eGPU dock, I've just run the HDMI out of the video card, which is the 5700 XT. So we've just plugged in the Thunderbolt 3 cable. It's going to initialize. And now, instead of using the built-in Radeon graphics, we're using a 5700 XT over Thunderbolt. Like I mentioned, this build is definitely not for everybody. It's kind of a niche build. You know, if you have a use case scenario, then you can definitely do something like this. And personally, I'm a huge fan of these mini PCs, so I kind of wanted to see if it could even be done. So I've got everything situated now. We're running over that eGPU. Give you a look at this. As you can see, still got that 5700G. We can still access those Radeon 8 graphics that are built into this APU, but when it comes down to it, we want to use this big GPU here. And it just happens to be a Radeon RX 5700 XT with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So you might notice that the fans on the eGPU aren't spinning right now. We'll go into Afterburner. We can control them from right here. So we've just turned them on. It's just kind of got that sleep mode going. It's not hot enough to run them. And now what I want to do is run a few benchmarks on the PC like it is now, then we'll jump right into some gaming and see how much more performance we got out of it by adding this eGPU. And I just went with the same benchmarks. Here we have 3 d Mark Night Raid with a 45,275. We're around 20,000 without the GPU. Next up we have Fire Strike. We got a total score here of 20,645. And remember, without the eGPU, we had a 4,679. And the last one here is Time Spy. Total score with the eGPU, 8,283, and without, 1,768. So obviously, we did up the GPU performance by quite a bit, and I expected it, adding something like that 5700 XT. But now it's time to get into some real-world gaming and see how this thing performs with that Thunderbolt 3 dock attached. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, Ultra Settings, 1080p, getting an average of 92 FPS. Not bad at all, we've definitely upped the performance on this little PC. Before, we did have to take this down to low to get an average of around 67 out of it. GTA 5, very high settings, 1080p, we got an average of 123 FPS out of this, and it's much higher in most of the places. With the overclock on the CPU and the built-in GPU, we could get over 60 at 1080p with a high-low mix, or a high-normal mix. Here's Doom Eternal, Ultra, 1080p, if you remember on the built-in graphics, we really struggled with this, but we got an average of 83 FPS out of it on Ultra settings. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. Going into this, I was sure we'd get much better performance out of it. We're at a medium-high mix, 1080p, and it's kind of struggling to keep it 60. 
We did get an average of 63 out of this, but I thought it would be much better. So yeah, this definitely works out. It's really cool to see a Thunderbolt eGPU connected to an AMD setup. Um, one thing that I would recommend was not going with something like this and just getting, you know, a mini tower case and throwing that GPU right in the PCIe X16 slot. It'll definitely net you better performance, but I really wanted to experiment with this. And, you know, like it sits without an eGPU attached for emulation, this thing does an amazing job. But if you need a little more out of it, you can always go with Thunderbolt as long as your motherboard supports it. And this is really the only board that I've seen that uses the AM4 socket and Thunderbolt 3 that's able to use an eGPU. But in the end, I would just go with a bigger build. If you're going to buy all of these parts, go with a tower and just put that right in there. This is kind of a niche build, just an experimental build, but it does work out as you saw with this video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing what this little PC can do without an external GPU, link for that video is in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.